What's up, YouTube? Today we're talking about long exposures, the gear you need, how to do it, camera settings, the whole nine yards, and we've come to no better place than Niagara Falls, Ontario. Let's go check it out. All right, so we walked down a little bit from where we're gonna be shooting because it's incredibly loud down there. But real quick, I'm gonna to touch on the gear required to shoot long exposures. So obviously, number one, you're gonna need a camera. I'm using the Canon EOS R, but literally any camera that allows for you to shoot in manual is gonna work perfectly. B, you're gonna need a neutral density filter. So neutral density filter is literally just a dark piece of glass that blocks light from coming into the camera. So on a bright day like today, it's gonna block a bunch of the light that's coming into the camera so we can slow down the shutter speed and get that long exposure. And then C, finally, the last thing is this tripod down here that we're gonna be using. You can literally use any tripod. Just make sure it's a decently uh, sturdy tripod. I'm gonna link all the stuff that I use in the description below, as well as a bunch of different ND filters that I've used in the past and that I would recommend. Okay, so we're heading over to the spot right now and it's gonna be really loud, so I'm gonna give you two tips before we get over there. Tip number one is to use a two second timer on your camera. And I'm taking a whole bunch of snow to the face right now, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, two second timer on your camera. So there's an option in almost every single camera to use a two second timer, which essentially just delays the shutter on your camera by two seconds. So you'll press the shutter, it'll wait two seconds, and then it takes the photo. And so you're gonna do this to minimize camera shake. So typically what I do is I hit the shutter, it waits two seconds, the camera will stop shaking, and then it takes the photo, which allows for you to get as sharp of an image as possible. Tip number two is to always use manual focus when you're doing long exposures. With a really dark ND filter on the front of your camera, oftentimes it'll lead to issues where the autofocus misses, so just always use manual focus. Now that I had my camera set up with the ND filter attached, I was able to stop my aperture down to around f13 and slow the shutter speed down to a full second. As you can see, with the longer shutter speed, it gives the water at Niagara Falls a really interesting, surreal look. I also took a photo of the falls without the ND filter and a much faster shutter speed. It was around 1 30th of a second to give you an idea of what it would look like if we did not do a long exposure in this instance. All right, so we got two shots. One shot was a long exposure. I think it was a full second. And then the second shot was not a long exposure. I think it was 1 30th of a second shutter speed. And so one, as you can tell, has this really cool, surreal look. Whereas the other one you can tell just is not a long exposure. It doesn't look like it at all. And you can see where the water is a lot harsher than in the other photo. It is absolutely freezing outside right now. Lucas's hands are completely dead. He's been filming me this whole time. Yeah, they're just frozen. <laughs> and uh, I think we're gonna wrap things up and we're gonna head back to the office. Let's do it. All right, guys, if you made it this far in the video, definitely make sure to go down below, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a ton and I appreciate it big time. Before I wrap this video up, I wanna to touch on a couple of different use cases for long exposures beyond just making water in photos look cool and look unique. So the one big use case for long exposures is actually in low light photos when you wanna keep your ISO low, but you also wanna keep your aperture stop down to maintain a really sharp image. So in situations where it's darker outside or when you're shooting a sunrise or a sunset or something like that and there's limited light available, using a long exposure without an ND filter on the front of the camera is an awesome option for getting as sharp and as high quality of an image as possible. As all of you likely know, the higher your ISO goes up, the less quality of an image it is. ISO going up, obviously, as you guys all know, deteriorates the quality of the image. And also having a lower aperture oftentimes leads to less sharp of an image or rather a, an image that has a more shallow depth of field. So using a long exposure in these instances allows for more light to be captured by the camera while maintaining a low ISO and a more stop down aperture. You can also use long exposures for things like astrophotography at night or even shooting traffic lights on a highway and and things of that nature. Long exposures are an awesome tool that have a ton of different use cases that allow for creativity beyond just what you can do handheld with a camera. I highly, highly recommend experimenting with them, go out, shoot a couple waterfalls with them, test out shooting traffic lights, maybe even try out astrophotography. There's so many different cool things that you can do with long exposures and using these tips and the tools that I've given you today, there's a ton of different possibilities that you can now do. Anyways guys, let me know in the comments below what you wanna learn about next. I'm happy 
to make more tutorials like this. These are a ton of fun to make. If you haven't already given the video a thumbs up, definitely do it, please. I'd appreciate it big time. And if you're not subscribed, I make videos like this every single week. Hit that subscribe button down below and I'll keep on pumping out content for you guys. Anyways, I'll plan on seeing you all in my video next week. Peace.